The next part we're going to use is part number 80035-5. Now this is labeled dash 4 in the manual. And basically it's just a little plastic spacer. Um, at this time also as you're pulling them off the trees you're going to want to use your hobby knife and make sure that there are no spars left on there. Uh, you do need to make sure that this is smooth around the edges and that there's no no uh, plastic sticking out that can cut those o-rings. We're very simply at this point going to slide that down inside on top of the o-ring and push it down and it's going to seat that o-ring down in there. You can use a wrench or you can use your shock shaft and go ahead and poke that unit down so that it seats down inside. Hopefully you can see it there. Let's take our second o-ring. We're going to slide it right in on top and it sits down in there just like so. Again you're going to want to make sure it's not twisted and you do need to make sure that it is somewhat lubricated. At this point, we're going to take the top cap, which is AX80035-2. Now it's labeled dash 3 in the manual, but it is part dash 2. And you can see that it's cupped. This portion right here is, has a, an indentation and this portion is flat. We're going to take that and we're going to push it over the top of our cap until it snaps and it sets in all the way around. That's what your finished cap is going to look like. Very simple. From here we are going to take our shock shaft and we're going to put our piston on there. First thing we're going to do is as we look at the shaft you're going to see that one end of the shaft has flat spots on it which is right here and the other end does not. The end that has the flat spot is the end that goes down to the bottom of the shock so it sits like this. So we're going to install the pistons onto the top of the shaft, the one without the flat spot. First thing we're going to do is take a little washer. We're going to drop it on there. Make sure it seats down onto the shoulder. Then we're going to take our piston. And our piston is a three hole and it is properly marked as 80033-3 and you have several tuning options with the discs um, however we're going to build it like it's asking us to in the book and we're going to use the three hole all the way around um, this is another place where you want to make sure that you get off all of your tree spars with your hobby knife so it doesn't bind up inside the shock we're going to lay that on top of the shaft then we're going to put another washer over the top of that and then we're going to put the little nylock nut on. Come on, there we go. Now as you're screwing the nylock nut down on there you're going to want to hold the shaft with something and I have a pair of shock shaft pliers that I use and the material is softer than the shaft so we don't have to worry about marring it up. A lot of people don't have that. You can take a pair of pliers and and put some uh, electrical tape around the jaws, just enough to hold it so that uh, you don't scratch the coatings off of your shaft. Um, at this point, we're going to go ahead and, come on, focus. We're going to tighten up this nut just until it touches. We don't want to over-tighten it. Um, if we over-tighten it, that piston is going to bind. So go ahead and just tighten it down till it touches and you're going to see that this 
piston is doesn't move. So we're going to want to back it off just a little bit until there's no binding on that and that it rotates freely but you don't want a whole bunch of play in there. So take your time and adjust that properly. Alright so at this point the shaft is built. Let's shift directions here. We're going to take our bottom holder here and I believe yes it is mismarked. Um, not quite sure which one to use so I took an educated guess. There are several on the tree that I found but they're different lengths so I found the one that the shaft can completely screw into without bottoming out and the part number on that is AX80034 they call for part number one but that's not a, an end so we're using part number eight so again that's mismarked we're gonna go ahead and uh, not screw that in yet we're going to take the part number AX0018-1 which are these little pivot balls and we're just gonna call them pivot balls instead of uh, part numbers because we're going to end up using a lot of these throughout the build. You'll notice that it's flat on one side and that's where my finger is and it's open on the other side. There's no flange. So when we press these in we always want to press them in. Woo! We always want to press them in so that uh, they stay and they don't go all the way through on the flange. And I'll show you what I mean here. They're pretty easy to get in. Let's get this to focus. Come on. Focus. There we go. So we're just going to push this in. Sometimes you can just do it with your fingers just like that. Sometimes you can put it on the table. But you can see the flange there and you want to press it through um, and not go all the way to the flange. It wants to rotate on there. Alright, so those three components are built and now we have our shock tube and the shock tube I believe I didn't check the part number on it but it's hard to miss that's what it looks like you're gonna see that it's threaded on one end on the outside and smooth on the bottom and if you look on the inside one end is threaded which you can see there that's the threaded end the bottom and the top is not threaded okay so what we're going to do at this point is we're going to take our cap that we built and we're going to take the bottom of the shock which is the threaded end and we're simply going to screw it in you want to be careful and screw it in slowly and make sure that this gasket is lubricated so that it doesn't get cut or pinched and very slowly just screw it in until it fully seats and there's no gap just like so. You can tighten it down just by hand. Uh, tighten it as tight as you can by hand, uh, but there's no need to use a wrench or anything on there. You'll probably damage it if you try being a plastic shock. All right, next step is we are going to insert the shaft into the body. I'm going to grab a little bit more of my green slime. Again, you can use your shock fluid if you want. We're going to put it on the shaft. We're also going to make sure that the threads are thoroughly lubricated because we're going to pass those through the seal and we don't want the thread to cut the seal. So very simply, you're going to drop that down through the top, fish around until you find the hole through the bottom, and just wiggle it very lightly and push it Make sure that it's straight as it's going in because you don't want to cut those, those uh, O-rings. Go ahead and pull it down just like so. You move it back and forth a couple of times. Make sure it's not binding. And if it is, um, if you feel it binding on the shock body, you're going to want to revisit that piston to make sure that it's, uh, you have all your spars cut off of it. Okay. The last step is going to be to install the end onto the rod and you can get it started by hand, make sure it goes in straight and then you're going to want to grab the shaft 
and I'm going to use my pliers here. You're going to screw those on. It can be a little difficult um, as you get towards the bottom, the more thread that's in there. If you lubricated the threads up with silicone or the green slime, it's actually going to twist right on. And you're going to put it all the way on until it touches and there's no thread left. And you don't want to over tighten that. Okay. We're going to skip ahead just a little bit and we're going to grab the part number AX80035 4. And it's actually mislabeled. It says dash 5, but it is dash 4. And this is your shock spring retainer. And if you'll notice, we did skip ahead um, and finish step number 7, and we're going to do just a little bit of step number 8, and then we'll move on. Um, take a little bit of lubrication, and you're probably best served to put it on the inside threads here. Uh, you don't need too much. Just plastic to plastic sometimes is a little difficult to spin. So I'm just going to put a little bit of lubrication on the, the top few threads on here just to aid this. Now, as you look at the spring holder here, you're going to see that it has a ridge on one side that captures the spring. And then it's serrated and then a flat top. This is the top. So we're going to go ahead and screw this in. And it goes over the shock. And go ahead and screw it down about a half an inch or so. This adjusts your ride height once you start to tune your shocks. So just put it about a half inch to an inch down. It doesn't really matter. The last thing we're going to do is once you get all of your shocks built, we're going to make sure that they all measure out and are the same length. And when I say that, we're going to set them down and we're going to look at the length of the shafts and the rod ends. Sometimes they're not even and you want to make them so that they're all the same length or the same height when they're fully extended. Before we start to bleed, um, we're going to back up a step because I forgot a part. We need to put the little AX30113 onto the shafts which are a little rubber bumper. It was hiding and I wasn't reading my directions but it's a little coned bumper, uh, rubber bumper and you'll see that the cone shape on there and the cone shape is going to point towards the top of the shock. So what we're going to do is we're going to remove the end that we just put on always forgetting something. That's why I like to double back and recheck everything on the directions as I'm building. Never hurts to double check. So we're going to slide that little bumper up onto the shock. Shaft just like so. And reinstall our end. Ha! Huh. Now we're going to fill and bleed the shocks out, which in itself is a little messy, but it's kind of fun. I enjoy building shocks. So, get all your pieces and parts set out for the next step. We're going to rock and roll.